Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eat Up Mondays with your boy Trevor Pope. Just want to say thank you guys for joining me once again for another spiritual meal. It is always an honor and a pleasure to just sit down and chop it up with you guys when it comes to the Word of God. Listen, today we're going to be talking about faith and fear in the midst of this pandemic, which is called the coronavirus. Um, as we can see, since it's been named a pandemic, um, it has caused uh, some pandemonium among the people. You know, at first it was kind of subtle. People wasn't really sweating it that much. It was a lot of joking going on and things of that nature. But now people are starting to panic a little bit and taking it a little more serious. And I can understand the panic, uh, especially from those that are in the world. And what I mean by in the world that may not. Uh, believe in God or, you know, find their strength in God, may not have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you know, may not have the ability to look at this thing through the lens of God. I can kind of see their panic and the reason why they're frantic and, and leaning to their own understanding and their own wisdoms, because that's something that they're used to doing. But when it comes to those of us that are in Christ, um, that's something that we should not be doing. And, you know, you, you're starting to see a little bit of that same panic and frantic in those that are claiming to be followers of Christ or those that are followers of Christ. So that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today was faith and fear in the midst of everything that's going on. So listen, the meal is on the table. The food is ready. So without further ado, guys, let's dig in. Listen, our two foundation scriptures is going to be 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 6 and 7 and Psalm uh, chapter 91 and verse 2. So first I'm going to get into 2 Timothy and talk a little bit there and then we'll talk uh, from the perspective of Psalm 91 and verse 2. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 6 and 7 reads, Wherefore I put thee in the in remembrance, there, wherefore I put thee in remembrance, this is Paul talking to Timothy, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. So he's talking to Timothy about stirring up the gift that is in him. But what I wanted to get to was this this next uh, verse uh, verse seven because I think that you know even though he's talking to Timothy right now in this situation about his gift I think what he's getting ready to say to Timothy here in the seventh verse is what we should be all saying to ourselves in the midst of this pandemic it goes on to say for God has not given us the spirit of fear he says for God have not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so he says listen God has not given us a spirit of fear but it is of power it is of love and of a sound mind and that's how we should be handling this situation that we are currently in we should be handling it with power we should be handling it through love which is God and of a sound mind which is the mind of of Christ. But unfortunately, you know, we're not seeing that. We're seeing, you know, from those of us that are saved. And that's who I'm mainly talking to today. If you're out there and you're not saved, listen, I pray that you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. I pray that this will encourage you to ask, what must I do to be saved? But today I'm talking mainly to those of us that are already saved or that claim to be saved and that are in the midst of this situation. Listen, this is how we should be handling it. We shouldn't be running around frantic. We shouldn't be running around, you know, causing more fear, you know, that's then that's already there, you know, things of that nature. But we should be handling this with power, love and of a sound mind. And when I think about what I, you know, when I look at what's going on, I think about Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is is small. Let me read that again. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. That word faint there means weak, lacking courage, cowardly. The word adversity means unfortunate event or circumstance. So the Bible is saying here that, listen, if, you find in your, if you're finding yourself weak or lacking courage in the midst of this unfortunate event, then your strength is small. And why is your strength small because obviously you are not leaning on the one where we get our strength from and sometimes these type of things happen I think anything that happens in our lives that we consider to be tragic or that that we consider to be devastating I think these things come a lot of times not only to better us because believe it or not the Bible is in many places tell us tell us how our trials are really here for the betterment of us but sometimes not only that they come 
come to show us where we really are in God because we like to claim we're here. We like to claim we're there. We like to claim that we're so strong. But sometimes situations like what we see going on right now will show us what kind of strength we have. How much courage do we really have? But listen to Psalm 28 verses 6 and 8. It says, Blessed be the Lord because he have heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. So he says, listen, I trusted in him and that's how I was able to get my help. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength and he is the saving strength of his anointed. So we have to get that strength from God. Psalm 73 and 26 says, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble or a very present help in trouble. So we have to understand where our strength comes from. So if we find ourselves weak and cowardly in the midst of this unfortunate event, that means that we are not drawing strength from God. That means we are not in the place with God where we may thought we were. Because listen, I'm telling you, talk is cheap. You can talk all day. Um, you can talk all night. But when real trials come and real things hit your life, it's going to show how how much you really are relying on God for your strength, how much you are really trusting in God. And when we look at uh, uh, Psalm 91 and 2, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. So he says, listen, I will say to Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. That word refuge there means a place of safety, protection from danger or difficulty, a person that gives shelter, help or comfort. This is how we always supposed to be looking at God. He is always supposed to be looked at and understood to be our refuge. This is where we go um, when we need that safe place. This is where we go when we need to be uh, uh, safe from danger danger and the things that are going on around us. like, And that's why he says, listen, if I, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. That's why we should never be walking away from God or going outside of his word. We should always find ourselves abiding in him. And that's why we have to constantly stay in prayer, constantly stay reading the word. It doesn't mean that you have to read a lot, but reading and getting to know God, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there's no way that your faith can be increase if you are not listening to scripture or reading scripture. But when you look at the word fortress, it says a fortified place. Fortified is reinforced, secured, strengthened, armed, armored, safeguarded, strong. Like this is where we go in the midst of our storms, or this is where we should already be in the midst of our storms. And if we are not already there, then we're going to find ourselves in a place of fear. We're going to find ourselves in a place of panic. When you look at first John chapter four, the scripture says that, listen, perfect love casteth out fear. And who is love? God is love. And it says the reason why it casteth out fear is because fear has torment. The word torment is great pain or, an, or anxiety. These are things you cannot find finding God. That's why those things are casted out in him. You don't find those things in him. So if you are in the midst of those things, or if you are finding that in your life, or if you are feeling that, then you are not in the place with God where you need to be. And that's the thing that you need to be focusing on, especially in the midst of of what is going on. Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Listen, in the midst of what's going on, now is not the time, guys, for us to lean unto our own understanding. But the Bible goes on to say, in all thy ways, and everything that's going on, and everything that you're doing right now, and every move that you're making, in all of those ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge Jesus, acknowledge God, acknowledge Christ, and he shall, he will direct thy paths. If it, if you're lacking direction, if you feel like you don't know what to do and which way to go, the Bible is clear. God has promised that if you acknowledge him in all thy ways, and every move that you're getting ready to make, 
acknowledge him, get his attention. God, what should I do here? The Bible is clear that he will direct your paths. You don't have to be out here wandering about and scared and afraid and unsure. God will make clear the path that you must take. God will give you the strength that you need to get through this. When we look at Psalm uh, chapter 118 and 8, it says it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And why did I read this scripture? Because a lot of what I am seeing is we are putting a lot more confidence in man than we are putting in the Lord. And how are we doing that? Because we are hanging on every word of man, every piece of news that's being put out, every single thing that this government official is saying, or this president, or the president is saying, or uh, that the, the doctors are saying, like we're hanging on every word. And I'm not saying that there aren't truth in some of those words, but we are hanging on those words more than we are on the words of God. And that's where the problem is coming in. That's what's causing us to fear and not have the strength that we need need to have in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this crisis. And I just wanted to encourage you guys today, listen, shut that TV off. Stop trying to read and post everything you see. Get in your word, pray, talk to the Lord. Ask him for the strength that you need. Be honest with him. Say, listen, I'm dealing with some fear here. I'm, I'm, I'm panicking. I'm struggling. I'm, I'm trying not to show everybody else, you know, that I really am scared and I, I want real strength. I want real boldness. I don't want to be acting like I got boldness. I want to be bold. And last but not least, to those of you that are out here on social media posting up, you know, how super spiritual you are and how super strong you are in your faith and how on you know and how you're on this this high level with God and you're kind of talking down to other people in the faith because you feel they are not on the level where you are listen understand we do not need it we do not need brothers and sisters in Christ at this time in this hour trying to prove to us how deep they are and how you know close they are with God and things of that nature that's not even what the walk is about this walk is about unity this is about picking up our brothers and sisters in Christ when they are down down and that's what this message is about those that are struggling a little bit in their faith that they they they're anxious and they feel of fear there because you know there's uncertainties that's what this message is about i'm here to encourage you to listen come on come on up get in that word let's pray i'll be praying for you let's get to the place where god wants us to be so that we can put our total trust in him through this process but what we don't need is reckless saints we don't need reckless brothers and sisters trying to prove something and by you trying to prove something putting the rest of the world and the rest of the church at risk listen this is not about you this is is not about me. This is about us. And that is what is important to God is the household of faith. So listen, if you're that deep, if you're that strong in God, then you need to be praying for those that are not there, not putting them down, not making them feel bad because they are not in the place where you are or where you claim you are. So listen, I just wanted to encourage all you guys, listen, don't allow this situation to cause you to fear. Don't allow this situation to cause you to question God. This should draw you to God even closer. This should make you spend more time with God even the more because we're going to need his direction. Every move that's going to be made by those in the world, we're going to have to get the direction on God on how to deal with that, what to do and what not to do because guess what? We don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes and that's just a fact and that has nothing to do with conspiracy theory or this and that but we do have to remember that Satan is the God of this world. And he's, he's always, you know, trying to do something, especially to the saints. So we have to make sure that we acknowledge God in all our ways. And I promise you, he will direct your paths. So listen, guys, if you're going through and you're struggling, know that we are all praying for you. That may not be where you are. And please, once again, get in that word. Don't allow pride cause you to not to get in that word. And don't allow anxiousness and and fear to cause you to hang on every word of man, but make sure you hang on every word of Christ. Listen, guys, know that I love you. And to the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together, Shalom.